Well, hello everyone. I'm back on my uh, weekly video. Today is uh, Monday, so it's near the uh, end of the holiday weekend. Uh, I do hope that you all have had a, a good Labor Day uh, weekend. Uh, in terms of COVID-19, not a lot has uh, changed from last week. As I mentioned previously, I don't take a lot of stock in daily changes and uh, the numbers of infection rates and death rates and all of that. You really have to just focus on the major trends. There are a few major trends to um, take note of. One is that the age group that's most at risk for getting the uh, disease right now is the under 30 age group. So that's very important to keep in mind. The second is that the uh, death rate is much, much less than it was previously. That's a very, very good thing. No doubt a lot of that is because the younger people are getting uh, COVID-19 um, more than the uh, older people. Uh, but nonetheless, the uh, death rate is, um, is much less now. And something else which is uh, a actually very uh, amazing is that the racial disparity in the death rate has basically been eliminated in uh, Michigan. So you might recall that um, African Americans make up about 15% of the population in Michigan. Early on, about 45% of the deaths in Michigan were in that population, in the African American population. Right now, the, uh, the percentage of the uh, deaths in the African American population is about 13.2%. So it's about exactly the same as the proportion of the population. So that is uh, uh, amazing and it's, it's great progress. Um, I'd like to think that uh, part of the reason of the progress is the work of the uh, Coronavirus uh, Racial Disparity Task Force led by Lieutenant uh, Governor Gilchrist uh, and a number of people I happen to be on that committee and the uh, work that committee has been doing, as I mentioned many times before, uh, I think is, uh, is making a, a difference. Uh, wh whatever the reasons, um, it, it is good to see that the racial disparity in the uh, death rate is, uh, is basically been eliminated. It gives um, uh, some hope that um, if we focus on all of the different disparities, um, uh, whether it's uh, uh, age, uh, race, just whatever, that if we focus on it, that there's a hope that we can um, uh, have some positive outcome. Uh, Detroit continues to do well. Uh, Wayne County itself has is, is got a, a, quite a few uh, cases relative to some of the other counties, but uh, Detroit proper continues to do well with a low percent positivity and low uh, number of cases as well as deaths. So, uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, in terms of um, uh, other things related to uh, the state, uh, I think that uh, all of you know now that the governor has uh, decided to allow gyms uh, to open after Labor Day, so uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, that means that our gym, the Mark uh, Harris uh, Fitness Center, will also be open. Uh, we're gonna, the first day of opening will be Thursday. Uh, it'll be open Thursday starting at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, the next few days, uh, the gym will be uh, cleaned very thoroughly. Um, the staff will be uh, trained with new protocols. Um, make sure you understand what the uh, new protocols are. There will be uh, limited numbers of people allowed in the gym, and there are just some um, instructions in terms of cleaning the, the uh, equipment and so forth that you're going to need to be aware of, and you're going to have to wear a mask. Um, I think that the students are going to really uh, welcome uh, this. A, a couple of times I'm, when I was walking around the uh, campus, I saw students coming to the uh, fitness center and uh, seeing that it was closed, just working out right outside the, um, the uh, door there on the uh, concrete. Uh, so uh, many students are motivated to uh, want to uh, work out and get some exercise in, which is a great thing. And, and now uh, they'll be able to uh, do so starting Thursday. I'll certainly be there, so uh, 5.30 Thursday. Uh, see you there. Um, uh, classes started last week. Uh, got some great news. We were anticipating a uh, large freshman class. It looks like uh, that is the case. Uh, census is not till uh, uh, later this week, but as of Friday, um, and which 
which I'm pretty sure will continue on through census. That historically, um, this last week is there's not a lot of change. Uh, we will have the largest uh, freshman class in the history of the university. Uh, we will also have the the largest uh, African American uh, uh, numbers of African American in the freshman class uh, in over a decade, and the uh, largest numbers of Hispanics in this class uh, since uh, we have good records, which would be about 2005. We have dashboards that go back to 2005, and uh, looking all the way back to 2005, this will be the largest class of Hispanics also. Uh, so those are all good things. Um, we're looking forward to uh, welcoming this class, and um, it, it, this is great. Um, I just hope that, it, that everybody continues to uh, uh, be safe, uh, continues to do the things that's uh, important to protect each other. Um, let's move on then to um, my book review. I did finish the leadership in, in um, tumultuous times that I mentioned that I was reading before. Uh, just to recap, it uh, profiled uh, four leaders, four presidents, uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, both Roosevelt's, Teddy Roosevelt and Franklin uh, Roosevelt, and Lyndon Johnson. And um, after uh, preliminary chapters that talked about their life uh, uh, growing up and so forth, um, they went into, the book went into the, the major challenges they had during their presidency you know, and, and the accomplishments. You know, certainly in the case of Abe Lincoln, um, his major challenge was slavery and the accomplishment of the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, with T Teddy Roosevelt, he dealt with a, a major coal strike that was going to cripple, that was crippling the United States. And going into the winter months, it, it would have just been just catastrophic had this not been settled. And uh, his uh, crisis management uh, uh, was on display. Uh, with Franklin uh, Delano Roosevelt, um, you know, he became president during the uh, Depression, and um, there was a situation with uh, um, uh, people not having uh, trust in the banks, the uh, possibility of banks closing, and uh, Franklin uh, Roosevelt was a, a very trusting uh, kind of person. Uh, his fire, fireside chats uh, restored faith in the American people. And then Lyndon Johnson, of course, with the uh, civil rights uh, um, being passed. Um, the thing that I bought, that I wondered about when I was reading this book is, you know, these are all great leaders, and would they have done what they did if they were at a different time? In other words, could uh, Teddy Roosevelt, uh, if he was at the uh, time of uh, Franklin or uh, Lyndon Johnson, could he have um, uh, been successful? Or were these leaders um, the right people at the right time? And I, I kind of think the latter, and if there's more time, uh, or if anybody wants to engage me in that discussion uh, offline, uh, we, can, we can have that discussion uh, through email or whatever. But um, I, I just think in the case, for example, of Lyndon Johnson, that he was uniquely situated to be able to pass the uh, civil rights uh, legislation. And I'm not even sure if, if uh, John Kennedy had lived, whether he would have been able to do it. Um, Johnson was uniquely qualified because of his knowledge of the uh, Congress and his personality. Um, what made Johnson not a great president overall is his uh, foreign policy, particularly Vietnam. But uh, he was uh, uh, amazing when it came to uh, domestic policy. Um, the only thing about this book I'll say is that it wasn't light reading, uh, so I decided that I'm going to do some light reading now, and I picked up a historical uh, novel called Manhattan Beach, which I'm reading. Uh, the only thing i tell you about that is that I lived in Manhattan Beach, but that was a Manhattan Beach in Los Angeles. This is not that Manhattan Beach. This is. Uh, a historical novel that's uh, based in um, Brooklyn, I guess, but New York, but I think it was Brooklyn. Uh, there was a, one of the characters has a, a beach house, and I suppose it was on Manhattan Beach in, in Brooklyn. Um, that's all I'll tell you about that book right now, but I'm about halfway through it, and it is a very uh, interesting book. Um, continue to uh, be safe, continue to um, uh, wear your masks, continue to social distance. Uh, let's continue to be 
uh, protect each other. So until next week, stay warrior safe.